Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org and today we're going to talk about an atmosphere unit study. Uh, my family is using Earth and Space by Bright Ideas Press and in this book there are four chapters about the atmosphere and the first um, activity in the book is to make a mural on the wall. Now, uh, they say that you can use construction paper in different colors of blue, but what we did is we just put, covered the whole wall in uh, white paper and we just stapled it up on the wall, uh, just rolls of paper that we got for free at a newspaper office. And then we painted it with uh, dark blue all the way up to light blue. And then what we did was we um, were, the kids are able to label uh, the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. So all of the weather, uh, the climate, it takes place in the troposphere, which is in the lower section, okay? And that has clouds, so you can see these cotton uh, clouds you can glue on. You can have some paper airplanes. You can connect them to the ceiling with string if you want them to move. Otherwise, we just hot glued them there. You can see at the very bottom, we have a city skyline and even a volcano. And it's pretty cool, pretty cool. My daughter made a, um, a hot air balloon. And so you could just fill up um, the atmosphere. Uh, the atmosphere is really the air the air that surrounds the earth, okay? And so we also have air pressure, believe it or not. We have, the air is actually pushing down on us. And so another one of the activities in the book is to make a barometer. Take a look at that activity. Here we are, we are making a barometer, a homemade barometer. And what you need first is a glass that has straight sides. So if you don't have a glass with straight sides, you can go to a secondhand shop and get one for about a dollar. Or you can um, also find one maybe at a dollar store, or you can go to a grocery store and buy something uh, from a jar that has straight sides and then dump out uh, the contents into um, a Tupperware or something and then uh, use it. Okay, so what we have here is a clear ruler that has been taped with waterproof tape against the side. That waterproof tape I found at a hardware store and it needs to be waterproof tape if you put water into the jar, you don't want it to unstick, okay? And then also you want a clear straw and we taped that clear straw in place with that waterproof tape as well. So now we are filling it half full with water. Put two drops of food coloring into the jar so that you can see the color going up the straw. Okay, so you let that water become blue. Uh, if you don't have any gum, you can use sticky tack. And you want to um, put your mouth on the clean straw and suck up the water up halfway. And then put the sticky gum or sticky tack on it. You could use your finger to block it from going down and then what you want to do is put it all the way up to the top. There. Okay, so make sure there's a little bit of blue or whatever color you have it up in that. And we are going to write down the uh, measurement on our chart and then we are going to compare it each day if it goes up or down. There are water droplets inside the atmosphere and that can be measured with a psychrometer. And so take a look at that particular activity. Here we are, this is a homemade psychrometer and um, we are trying to figure out the relative humidity of the air. And so we have two um, identical thermometers that we put uh, and one of them has a gauze that is wet that has a rubber band around it, okay? So you just, you can either tape these to the wall and, uh, and then what you want to do is you want to put a fan in front of it or you want to fan it a lot for so that wind goes on it. You could also blow on it, okay? And then you take the reading. So go ahead and stop. We took the reading 
and the one that was wet, was it colder or hotter than the one that is dry? The wet one was actually a lot colder, actually by three degrees, not a lot, but it was a pretty substantial, it seemed like to us. Since it's in the same room, if you have something wet around a thermometer, it actually, it actually feels colder. Okay, so then what you do is you subtract the dry temperature from the wet temperature, and then you look at a uh, table provided in the book that will show you what the relative humidity of that room is. And so you can do this for five days, and you can fill in the chart for five days um, and until you figure out uh, what the humidity is for uh, the different rooms in your house or the humidity uh, in one room over the course of a week. The book also has a super cool um, coloring page of hot air balloons. And so the kids were able to color the hot air balloons that are going through the atmosphere. And actually I've been on a hot air balloon and I wanna take my kids uh, up in a hot air balloon so we can enjoy the atmosphere. And up from above, uh, you have the fire going up into the hot air balloon, and, and then it's suspended in the sky and it's completely quiet. And you look down on all the beautiful, beautiful rolling countryside. I did this when I was a teacher in England, and it was so, so fabulous. So, as a field trip for your homeschool kids, I recommend going on a hot air balloon. Uh, that would be super, super fun for your study of the atmosphere. But otherwise, making those weather instruments will help teach you a little bit more about our atmosphere. The final activity is to get a paper plate. My paper plates are kind of tiny, so your paper plate is probably going to be bigger than this, but um, this is the atmosphere, and we are doing a pie um, a, a chart, and 78% of our atmosphere is uh, nitrogen, 21% is oxygen, and then a teensy bit is all the other gases in our atmosphere. So make sure to color uh, the nitrogen in one color, oxygen in another color, and all the other gases in the atmosphere with this color right here. So we really enjoyed studying the atmosphere. I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org. Thanks for watching our atmosphere unit study.